Hello and welcome back or welcome to Miss Finance if this is your first time on the channel. So today I'm going to go through personal tax. Now this is a topic that I absolutely love at AAT and you might think to yourself that's crazy but it is the one thing that is factual out of all the things that you learn. As long as you learn how to use the tax bands and personal allowance then you're pretty much okay with this topic. So what we need to know is that get the pen out. So every year HMRC give you a tax-free allowance. So if we look at the year 2020 to 21 and 2019 to 2020, tax-free allowance was £12,500. So what does that actually mean? So that means if you earned £30,000 a year, you take £12,500 off that and whatever's left, £17,500, then it's this here that is subject to tax. So it's not what you earn. So I write this in big letters. It's not this. It's not your salary. It's your taxable income. And how much you actually get taxed depends on how much you earn less your tax-free allowance. And whatever that value is, will put you either in the basic rate tax band the additional rate tax band or the higher rate tax band. So let's do an example. So when you actually come to doing your tax computation, I don't know how many of you have actually seen a full tax computation before today. So sorry if I'm about to tell you how to suck eggs, but we're going to do it anyway. So a full tax computation looks like this. So let's just say salary is £50,000. We always put your tax-free allowance here, so £12,500, and then whatever's left, which in this case, let's just double check, ooh, 37500 on the dot, so this is your taxable income, okay? Now, based on this here, if we were to look at the tax bands, we'll see that a basic rate, in other words, 20% tax, is for individuals who earn less than or equal to £37,500. So any value of £37,500 will be taxed at 20%. Anything else above that, up to £150,000, will be taxed at 40%. And then individual who, so who earn equal to 150,001 or more will actually get taxed at 45%. So because this individual nicely fits into this 20% bracket, all we do is take 37,500 times by 20% and that should give us 7,500. Let's get rid of the pound because there's already one at the top. There you go. £7,500 tax to pay. Now there's no way that the examiner is going to make it that easy for you when you come around to doing this. It's just not going to happen. Unless the examiner is feeling very, very nice, which, again, I just can't see it. So let's try something different. So I'm going to keep those over here so that we've got them there. So it's just something you need to learn. They change every year. Um, and you can go and find a book, a tax book that'll tell you, usually an Osborne book, and um, give you the rates for national insurance, etc. in the year. But if you just learn them for the exam, they're quite easy. There's only a few numbers. So let's do it where this individual has earned £80,000. That'd help if we can do it right. So £80,000, right? They're still going to get the tax free allowance. So that only changes in a couple of circumstances that we'll talk about a little bit later on. So if we did 80,000 minus 12,500, let's just work that out very quickly. That gives you 67,500. Oh. Okay, now because this individual earns more than 37,500, but less than 150,000 pounds, some of that is going to get taxed at 20% and some of it's going to be taxed at 40%. So that's okay. So we'll take 37,500 of this and times that by 20%. 
and then whatever is left, so I'm going to use this little balance sign. If you've never seen that before, it just means balance. So it's just going to be 67,500 and minus 37,500, which is going to be 30,000. And this just gets taxed at 40%. So it's as simple as that. So let's do the calculations. So 37,000 taxed by 0.2 gives us 7,500. And then 30,000 times by, let's not do that, 30,000 times by 0.4, I don't know what's going on with this calculator, there you go, 12,000 pounds. So that is going to mean that we're going to pay 19,500 pounds in tax. Okay, it's still with me at this point, so let's do another example. I'm just going to keep doing examples just to get your head around everything. Okay, so this individual earns, let's say, £90,000. Just make it interesting. Tax free allowance is £12,500. Let's get our little line up here. Okay, so what is that? Let's get a calculator out. 77500 so we know of that, again, 37,500 times by 20% is going to give you 7,500. You can work this out for you again, a bit of a nerd with numbers, I guess. You get that way when you've worked in finance for a while, you start remembering numbers. Okay, so the remaining balance, so again, I'm going to do this little remaining balance sign here. It's going to be, and clearly I cannot add up, 40,000 pounds times by 40%. So let's do the calculator for this. £16,000. So if you add the £7,500 and the £16,000, we get £23,500 of tax to pay. So I would say it's most likely that the examiner is going to ask you a question like this just because they can test you between the two different tax bands. So it'd be quite rare that you'd actually get a question about the 45% tax band, but we're gonna do that one now, just so you've got your head around it. So there is ever so slightly different rules for individuals who earn over 150,000 pounds. So whilst everybody else gets this 12,500 pound tax-free allowance, what actually happens is that 12,500 reduces by one pound for every single two pounds that you earn over a hundred thousand pounds. So if I just do a little calculation up here. So if you earn a hundred thousand and two pounds, your tax free allowance would actually then become 12,400. And 99 so it reduces by a pound for every two pound so at the point that you earn a hundred and twenty five thousand pounds you have no tax free allowance at all and if you want to work that out for yourself if you did 25k divided by two that gets you 12.5k so let's do it where an individual earns a hundred and thirty thousand pounds okay so because they earn more than hundred thousand pounds and they actually earn more than 125 thousand pounds if we just want to do this very quickly they have no tax free allowance so the entire 130k at this point is fully taxable so they would have 37.5k at 20 percent and then because they've not hit the 150k mark the rest of it is going to be at 40%. Again, if you've never seen the sign before, it's just like the little A sign that you use on um, a keyboard. It just means at, so at 40%. So if we did this here, you'll find that the higher up you go with your exams, the quicker that you need to shorthand everything because there won't be time in your exam to write everything out. And it's handy anyway when you get to, even at AAT level, just get things done quite quickly so that is 37k that is a 7.5k again 
so let's work it out so that is 44.5k of tax to pay on £130,000 which might seem a little bit mean but if you're in an £130,000 are you really that worried? I'll leave that question for you so let's just leave all this up here so that you can reference it back and let's go for another example okay so let's get our stickers out here and another one put down there okay so this time this individual earns a whopping a hundred and eighty thousand pounds very lucky now they don't have a tax free allowance because again as we've mentioned just before if you earn over one hundred twenty five thousand pounds you're not going to have a tax free allowance whatsoever so their entire £180,000 is actually taxable. So this is not going to be a small number, I can promise you that much. So if we did again 37.5k at 20%, that again gives us a 7.5k. And then what we have is 150k minus the 37.5k taxed at 20% to give us 40%. And then we have 30k at 45% such a lot so let's work it out so we've got 150,000 minus 37,500 so that's 112.5k times by 40% that gives you 45k if you're not good with fractions or you're not used to using a calculator so much if you just do times by 0.4 that's 40% if you do times by 0.2 that's 20% and times by 0.45 that gives you 45% so I'm just shortcutting everything so we've got 13.5k here so if we add all of that together that gives us 66k of tax to pay Wow. But again, if you're earning £180,000, are you really that bothered? So, let's do it again. And again, if you can get your head wrapped around this, then you're pretty much set to go and you can apply this in practice as well. So you can apply this to your own um, paycheck. You might not be able to work out the national insurance because we're just working out tax, but I can actually show you that in another video so that you can work out exactly how much your net pay is going to be before you even get your paycheck. So I'll do that in another video for you. So here, let's imagine that this person earns £220,000. So they're clearly a director of some kind. Okay. So again, zero tax-free allowance because they earn more than £125,000 and there is no tax-free allowance after that point. I'm going to keep repeating myself because that was one way that I actually, that I learnt when I was at AAT. Okay, moving on. So, as always, we have 37.5k at 20%, which we all know is £7,500. I can actually hear you say this to yourself in time with me. The next one is going to be 150k minus the 37.5k at the next tax band. So remember it's not all of this, it's not everything under 150k, it's just 150k minus 37.5k. Some of you might remember what this calculation was, I think it was about 112k and there we go so it was 112.5 so times that by 0.4 that gives us 45 thousand pounds and then we're going to have 70k at 45 which is 31,500 a lot of money so 70k at 45 percent and if you're wondering how I worked out the 70k, I've just taken 220k minus 150k because this falls into the next tax bracket. So that's a whopping £84,000. Now again, because I know the examiners well enough and having sat the exams myself many years back, I know 
they're not even going to give you one that's this easy. So let's give you one that they're going to give you. That's right, Mr. Examiner, we know what you're going to do. We're going to beat you at your own game. So, if I was an examiner, I would give you an amount that's more than 100k, but that's less than 125k. Just so that you have to work out this £1 for every £2 earned tax free allowance. So, let's say that this individual, let's get rid of the pound sign, earns £115,000. So, what's the tax free allowance? So, what we do is we take £115,000, we minus £100,000, and that gives us £15,000. Divide that by two, that gives you 7,500. Why do we keep ending up at 7,500? That's a bit weird, but it's okay, we'll roll with it. So what we then need to do is take the 12,500 pounds tax-free allowance minus 7,500 pounds, and that gives us a 5,000 pound tax-free allowance. So I'll, I'll say that again. So they earned 115,000 pounds, but anything over £100,000, it starts to reduce your tax-free allowance. So we basically work out how much of his salary or her salary is over £100,000. In this case, it was £15,000. So if we just divide that by two, that gives us £7,500 that we need to take off their tax-free allowance. So tax-free allowance being £12,500 minus the £7,500 gets you £5,000. So their taxable income is now £110,000. So the same principle applies as before here now. So we've got our 37.5k at 20%, which again is £7,500. So then what we need to do is take 110k minus 37.5k because obviously they've not earned enough to go into the next tax bracket and we're just trying to work out the amount on this 110k so we don't care about any other value so what's that going to give us Seventy two point five k so this is going to be at 40 percent it's also helpful if you leave the numbers into your calculator and don't make an error so you'd have to redo it again like i just did so What's that going to give us? That plus that of £36,500. There you have it. So let's just do one more screen. So I'm going to get rid of all of this example here. And let's just summarise the things that you really need to remember. Why is it really satisfying? rubbing out a whiteboard. Anyway, so we need to remember the tax-free allowance in whatever year that we're calculating. So it can change year on year. It's not really changed in the last year. So 2019 to 2020 was 12,500 and then 2020 to 21 was also 12,500. So we need to remember that 37,500 pounds is your basic rate taxed at 20%. So if you were to take your gross salary minus this tax free allowance, or I am abbreviating yet again, and if that is less than or equal to 37.5k, it's all going to be taxed at 20%. Then if you earn 37,501, up to 150k that's going to be taxed at 40% and then anything above that at 150,001 plus is going to be at 45% and then the very very last thing is for anyone anyone who earns more than 100 thousand pounds a year their tax-free allowance of twelve thousand five hundred pounds in this case will be reduced by one pound for every two pounds 
over 400k. And the way to work it out is to take whatever the salary is given to you, minus 100k, and then divide that by two. And whatever that figure is, this magical figure over here, you take your 12,500 and deduct this magical figure and whatever is left is their tax-free allowance. So it's as simple as that. So I really hope you found this video useful. As always, if you liked it, do give it a thumbs up because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And do consider subscribing because I will be putting out more videos like this in future. And if there's a specific topic that you find you're struggling with or you want me to go into in a little bit more detail, maybe more examples, then by all means put that in the comments box or join our Facebook group, which is study support for AAT students. And on there you can contact me directly with any queries. But we'd love to have you in the group. But otherwise, I shall see you on the next video.